Welcome or welcome back at I need help at C squared. In this example, we'll talk about the zero of the sum function f of x, g of x, h of x, and t of x. And you notice down here I said the zero of a function represents the x value or values for which the function is equals to zero. So let's start with the first one, which we have, which is f of x. And like I said, the function needs to be equals to zero. So we're going to replace f of x with zero. And obviously, we're going to have an equation. Zero equals two x minus 14. For solving for x, I'm going to add 14. And we have 14 equals 2x. And the last step, divide by 2. And we have x equals 7. So at x equals 7, the value of the function is 0. We call this the 0 of the function. It's at x equals 7. Also, be familiar with this form, 7 and 0. This is the x-intercept, which is kind of a order point. But sometimes you may need that form also. Let's take a look to part B, where we have another function, g of x. Okay, very similar. We're going to make that g of x equals to 0. And we have an equation, 0 equals negative 1 minus 7 over 2x. How you solve this one, it's up to you. I will personally uh, multiply by 2 both sides to get rid of that fraction first. But of course, it can be done in a different way. 2 times 0 is still a 0. And here we have the distributive property. 2 times negative 1, negative 2. And 2 times 7 halves, that will be just 7. Okay. And now you notice we have something very similar with part A. I'm going to add 2 here to get rid of the minus 2. So we have 2 equals negative 7x. And the last step, divide by negative 7. And we have x equals negative 2 over 7. This is the moment where the function g of x is 0. Of course, let me write like I did for the other example, negative 2 over 7 and 0 will be the x-intercept. And the good thing about this x-intercept, if you use a graphing calculator, you can see it. I'm not so sure in this case you can estimate it, but no, it's another way to do it, which is the graphical way. Let's go to part C, where we have something very similar, another linear function, by the way, make it the function equals to 0, and we end up with a similar equation with part B. And if you think about multiplying by 5, why not? Or negative 5, either way will be good. Let's say I'm going to multiply by 5. And we still get 0 here. And now 5 times negative 6 over 5, it's negative 6. And 5 times 18, that will be uh, 50, 90. Uh, I'm going to add 90 now. Very similar with the other two parts from here. And I have 90 equals negative 6x. And the last thing, divide by negative 6. And we have x equals uh, negative 15. Yeah, negative 15. And uh, of course, uh, this is when the function h of x is 0, the x-intercept will be negative 15 and 0 in case you need that. OK, uh, let's go to the last part of this problem, which is this interesting function t of x equals negative 16. So the same idea. I'm going to make the function equals to 0. 
then I end up with something that looks interesting. 0 equals negative 16. That is false. It's impossible, right? So that means there is no, uh, no x for which t of x equals 0. There is no value that makes the function equals to 0. Do not exist. That is another way to say it. And I'm going to put this short way here. And that's it for this example. If you enjoyed this example, don't forget to click the like button and come back at C squared for more help. Thank you.